And now let's talk about the global businesses and global ideas. So what are the latest AI trends for the different industries? I'm happy to invite Maxim Snowmovs to share his perspective. Maxims is leading a data and artificial intelligence team in Accenture Baltics. It is a team of 175 plus talents covering different data, automation and AI sub areas. During the past seven years in Accenture, together with the team, Maxims have been part of many transformation programs in different industries and we'll be happy to share some of the examples. The keynote presentation on what are the latest AI trends for different industries. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Maxim Snowmovs. Good afternoon, Maxims. Where are you calling? Where are you connecting from? I see some very Good beautiful... Afternoon. Yes, I'm based in Latvia, so actually not that far from you. Okay, so it, it, it's not yet that you're using uh, the the best trend in 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 our world called vocation, right? Because I was <laughs> expecting you to connect from Caribbean or from Bali. I don't know any anywhere. Yes, yes, not yet, not yet. I'm actually enjoying the the our weather right now outside, so. That's why still staying in the Baltics, I think, is a good strategy for today. Amazing. So, Maxims, the floor is yours. We're really keen to listen to the hottest trends now. Good. Thank you very much. And I'm happy to be here. Um, so for the next uh, 40 minutes, we would look into the actual view from the Accenture side on a couple of aspects within the AI. And I'll try to share some of the experience that uh, we have been working on uh, together with our team and together with the whole Accenture family globally. So before we go into a bit of a more details, uh, just briefly about the company who don't have ever heard about Accenture, which probably not a lot, is the, the company is focusing on the consulting. There's a different directions that we work with. And I'm highlighting here is that our so-called and data and artificial intelligence family. As you mentioned already, that um, responsible for the team in the Baltics. However, part of the global, there's a huge, huge team which is also an important aspect in terms of how do we focus on the latest and greatest things in the current world of the AI. So today's speech, I will focus on a couple of aspects. First of all, I would look into the technology vision and we will talk through the last three years trends. And it will be really interesting to, to look into what have been changed for the last three years and what are the latest things right now we as an Accenture see on the market and, and how does that actually relevant towards the artificial intelligence. You will be surprised to see that actually across different technological trends, we see the artificial intelligence becoming stronger and stronger. So then we'll look into the uh, couple of cases and uh, we will summarize that with having some of the key things to take away today home for, for you. So let me start with a bit of a background. What is the actual technology vision? So we have been doing the technology vision as a company for the last 20 years. Actually, this year was the 21st time when company have released the Accenture technology vision, which is an, a document that is based on the different sources. So we have been doing a research. We have been doing running a different surveys. And then we also reflecting the current real world situation we see and we live in. And we're combining that with an Accenture vision to form a specific technological trends that we will talk through today. So the survey, as an example that we're focusing on, it have a pretty diverse uh, aspect to cover. So we're starting from having uh, different countries to look into as a data sources. Then we understanding what are the industries specifically answers for that areas. What are the different uh, business lines and we're focusing not only on the smaller business, but also on the big business and middle business. And then we're also dividing that almost equally, as you can see, as per data of the business and IT directions. And all of that is basically having the CCU feedback on the particular area of the trends and how the market is going. So if you're looking into having an aspect on 
the technological trends, I would like to start with looking into what was the trends for us back then, 2019, when it was a completely different world uh, in, 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 in here, right? Um, every technological trend has their own theme, as we call, and 2019 was the theme of the post-digital era, which is upon us. So we were focusing on that as an aspect. In fact, Accenture have been focusing within the trends, if we check the last seven, eight years, that the post-digital area or digital area or digital transformation was one of the key aspects that was appearing within the trends. So one of the first trends in 2019, we have looked into DarkQ, which is the distributed ledger, artificial intelligence, extended reality, and the quantum computing, which is in four directions that we see as the next big things back then in 2019, which were accelerating. If you would check how the artificial intelligence have been looking into two years ago, it was a completely different picture than we see now. So the second trend we have looked into get to know me. This is more focused around the experience. And this was one of the first steps when we have looked into more from the experience perspective. So when we having some of the solutions, very important that is I have leveraging the information around the customer and providing the best experience that is possible out of that. The number three is the human plus or human plus worker, which is talking about the first steps of empowering us as a people with a technology that would deliver the higher value for our companies, for our customers, for our strategies, which basically enabling and empowering us with a new set of capabilities or technologies. The number four was back then is a security. So secure us to secure me. Um, there is a good base of the ecosystem that the companies have. And the technological security or the security as such was growing and growing as a topic. And we have seen a number of different interesting things happening globally around the topic itself. So the trend is talks about that the security have to be part of this ecosystem and have to prioritize within the tier one. And that was like a two years ago, right? So that's already is, is, is here if you're looking at it now. And then number five is the My Markets, which looking into having the, let's say, really a personalized strategy for the same customer experience, but now powered by the artificial intelligence, powered by the analytics, empowered by the, the digital access to the customer, so that the actual customers would be able to reinvent the actual experience. And that, that was the, the, the focus around the fifth trend, right? So that's like a, and a, three years ago, we looked into 2019. So if we making a step ahead into 2020, which was an interesting year in terms of the changes, and if the previous year was more in type of post-digital era, so here we're talking on the post-digital people as a theme, or can your enterprise survive within the tech clash, technological clash? And the trends here is already some kind of an evaluation of the previous year within the area. We can see that the first trend is talks around the I in experience, which is one of the main topics around then how then we move forward with that experience. So how can we make sure that there's a true collaboration, that there is a really um, experience that adds a value for us, for our clients, for the service that we receive, and bring that on the next level by powering a different technologies as we've seen in the 2019. AI in me is one of the favorite trends and it's highly relevant for today's discussion. It's looking into how can we bring up, let's say back then in 2019, 2020, it was a big hype around the automation as a such. So how can we make sure that we bring that on the next level? As we have probably heard already during today's conference, there's also a number of things that is right now AI is focusing on increasing the collaboration between the person and the technology. So how can we combine the human and the machine? How do we combine that in a successful combination? And that's the trend is, is talking about that empowering or releasing the full power for a person, for a people, for our talents within the companies. The number three is looking into the smart things around and dilemma around that. So this is more up to how do we do co-ownership 
with a customer, how we co-create together around the different products, how we make sure that we empower our customers and have an ability, our customers to impact on the actual result of producing the product. Again, this is powered by the data type of a thinking in terms of the trend itself. Number four is very interesting. So imagine a year ago, we have looked into and a prediction of the really a trend that the robots that is well known in the factories or on building a cars, as an example, would go outside of the factories of the data warehouse, actually to get more automation released outside of that and deliver some different results. And we have seen a lot of examples globally with happening that even in our Baltic countries as well. And the beauty about that is we see that this actually have been supported by the falling the hardware costs and such. And then also it was the rise of the 5G network back then a year ago. So that is still, I would say, interesting trend to look into how that, that would evaluate going forward. And then the last one, which is also a very important topic around the digital transformation that we have been some of the speakers talking today already, is that innovation DNA. So how do we innovate within the companies? And I would say this like it consists of the three building blocks. So we're looking into maturing the digital technologies. So putting technology with the last years would have been changing as a really a first step in, in terms of all the strategies. Having the scientific advancements and having also the emerging the dark hue trend that we looked into 2019, the distributed ledger, the artificial intelligence, the looking into the quantum computing and actually having this augmented reality or their new reality as, as, as one of the key things. So this is like and really one of the key uh, trends back then. So I know that this is pretty a lot of trends right now to talk about. So to summarize that, uh, you can actually see an interesting dependency or a connections between the trends 2019, 2020, and how they are now moved to the latest trends that we will talk today about the 2021 trends by the Accenture team. So if you looked into the previous themes, so this year theme is called a leader's wanted. So master of a change at the moment of truth, at the moment of the trust, which is talking about that this is, in fact, a very interesting time that we are living right now. This is type of an one-time opportunity for us to rethink the way how we have an, uh, digital strategies within the companies, the technological strategies we have the companies, which helps us now to make the certain required changes which would impact the next 10, 20, 30, 40 years in the companies. So number one trend is we're starting into 2021 is called stack strategically. That's basically an architecting the better future for all of us, which is one of the aspects is, is powering by the cloud. And most of our customers are or in migration to the cloud phase, or they already mature in the cloud or they are preparing for a migration to the cloud. As we all know, to make sure that artificial intelligence is successful, we need to make sure that it's powered by a strong amount of data, which is uh, highly connected to the cloud topic as such. And actually by the research that we spoke in the beginning of the session, it shows almost 80% of the executive says that technological architecture becoming critical now to become, let's say, a really successful in the current time of the year within their industry. So that's number one, looking into the second trend, uh, which is an interesting curve called mirror world. Everything around the investments around the data, artificial intelligence, digital twins, and how those technologies are helping up to build the business of the next level. On the left-hand side, you can see a bit of a statistics based on the research data that is divided by the two areas. One of the scaling, so the left-hand side is the scaling. If you're looking into top three, so the current scaling, a part of that research information, we have looked into cloud is number one, then there is AI, and there's the internet of things. Those are three things right now scaling, and you can see that the others are also pretty big. And then the three things that are experimenting, meaning that they will be scaling most probably afterwards, is a 5G, which is a big topic this year in general, the digital twin, 
and the automation. So to summarize that, we see that this actually nowadays have been really accelerated by the last two years changes, by the digital transformations that are needed. Instead of planning that in 10 years, all the companies or most of the companies will had to accelerate those journeys. And we see this as really an, an a closing type of a really uh, trend, right? Or changing the trend of a direction. We can see that actual statistics showing up that 11% uh, of the executives saying that they fully leveraging the data coming through the IoT, through the devices, right? And we also see that within the next couple of years, more than a half would invest into uh, products like digital twins, like AI and a data which will help to use basically a real world data to create and simulations, basically to test out the way how the product behave, the way how the model would behave within this digital twin world, which is a really interesting uh, topic as a such. And I'm looking forward to have it actually even more accelerated towards coming into the next year. So the next trend we're talking around is called AI technologies. I would say this is fully around the democratization of the technology or talking around the people. So there are a lot of technologies released right now, like a low code, automation, different AI tools that are not that of a complex to use to actually empower us as a people to deliver and result a lot faster. We see a different statistic, but they are talking around the first A, executive agrees that we need to invest into the skills. As an example, within Accenture, we have released a platform for training for the whole more than half people, half million people globally, that is called Technology Quantum, to empower on the new technologies, everyone who is working within the company. And this is just an example that we highly recommend towards the every of you, every of your companies, to focus on to getting, ramping up the latest technologies because this is already a reality needed here. And we see that almost 90% saying that that's actually critical for us now. And actually it's very important to reconsider the training strategies that every company have now. So this trend is talking more around the people part and how do we empower and go into the skill building activities. And then we're looking into the number four, which is talked around the anywhere, everywhere, which is basically a bringing our own environment into really the way how we work now. I mean, that has accelerated now. We have seen that uh, based on the current situations globally that, I mean, half of the companies have really heavily invested into the cloud to get the empowered by the systems to work remotely. However, there's a lot of benefits. I mean, almost every customer that, that have replied or every of the CSU executors replied that this is opening up a market for the new talent that are able to join the companies, which is actually still an, an, an interesting positive outcome of, of, of that situation. And we all know that we will not work forever from home, which means that we are going into the phase of every employee, every talent, every worker to bring out their own environment to the actual work, right? And then if you're looking into the last trend, which is also interesting, it's from me to we, which talking around the multi-party system that was accelerated now within the last two years. This is basically by leveraging the technologies like a blockchain, distributed ledger, distributed databases to basically um, to get an information more transparent to use the data between individuals and organization and share that and making sure that we actually empower and generate the new value levers for every of the company. And 25% of, of, of the executive organizations have been scaling already that. And as we see that many is focusing that actual cloud and AI would accelerate the innovation within the companies. That would be a key thing. And many recognize that and we see this is already a norm. And this will be really one of the big next things. So let's put aside a bit of a theoretical part and look into uh, some of the examples that I brought today with me from, from our team and the Baltics that have been working on. So we're looking to the first case is the scaled AI. 
This is talking around one of the stories we have been uh, working on for the past couple of years for industrial equipment customer. Um, within every of the story, I'll try to a bit of link that towards the five trends of this year and highlighting some of the key things that are relevant from this particular story. So just to recap is that we're looking into technological architecture to stack strategically is one of the key things. And it was one of the important, I would say, and probably biggest recognition for the customer to achieve within the story. The current technologies that we'll choose will actually impact our future, the way how we work, how the company would receive results and how we would basically go to the next uh, years. Um, this is really a good time right now to do the migrations to the cloud to leverage all the artificial intelligence potential. And we see that many comp companies are talking around how to scale the artificial intelligence. However, not that many still pursuing that as a direction. And those who are running in the phase of the proof of concepts, they still should make a step forward already to try to scale because those who are scaling, the achieving the, the results a lot, a lot better as we see. If you're looking into a bit of summarizing then where we are, our starting point is that around 60 to 80% due to let's say, different resource sources, we see that have not yet really scaled their own journey yet, or they believe they have not scaled it yet. And what does it mean scale? I mean, in this case, scale is that we're scaling through the whole organization, maybe through the whole business units and making sure that AI is becoming one of the key things within the companies, obviously also understanding all the considerations and we have thought around the, for example, threats and, and the possibilities and, and, and advantages from the previous speaker. So you could look into from that angle as well. So within of the reasons why we are not there, and I would say which is applicable for this case is that A, AI talent pool which is an, uh, an, was a challenge, and maybe now it's not that big of a challenge, but still is, is that we highly dependent on the manual work. So the talent pool is, is one of them. Buying from the sea level to understand that technology architecture have to be one of the priority things nowadays within the strategy. Data quality and availability will be number three as a reason, which would be really a reason of having the scattered amount of systems, uh, low commonality between the systems, and that was the case in, in, in this customer. And then the change management is still a big thing, right? The way us as a people adapting to the new technologies, we really need to consider that and company have to put that as a priority if you really want to scale the solution. And actually, if you look into the same researches, the second figure is talking around that many of those customers would be scaling within the next two, three years. This is interesting, and this is one of the uh, figures we have used in the story. So how we have done the actual result of, of the scaling, we basically have introduced, uh, we called it a scaled value framework within the company. It consists of the three aspects. It consists of the tower, module, and the principles. The tower is like a big theme. What uh, we're focusing on, the module will be our say components what it consists of, and the principles, let's say the key value levers or the key principles we would follow within that model. So we're starting with the first one is the value discovery. So it's very important to have an, a clear understanding the way, how would we search for the opportunity, which will be the most valuable for the customer and how we will make sure that this journey is actually bringing the new experience for the people. And the second module is talking around how do we try then the new technologies? So what would be the approach to test the new ways? So that's the tower number one. And then the number two is the digital workforce. So this is all around the technological piece, the architecture we spoke about, but it's basically then a really technological layer that would empower the artificial intelligence solutions to A, to deliver. And secondly, how do we actually then making sure that it's actually working afterwards as well. So how do we manage that? How do we understand which parts do we need to help always to get with the person? How do we actually hand over some of the things? The third aspect, obviously, is the human part. So here we're looking into how do we rotate and enable our human workforce? How do we ensure this really a good collaboration between a human and a machine? How do we make sure that we fulfill each of the gaps and we support each other to accelerate the value. And then also how to make sure that it's a pretty transparent what are the plans within the company. 
And then the last one is looking into the value realization. So we understanding how do we actually realize the value that we have discovered in the beginning? How do we monitor and basically how do we make sure that everything that we have started to look into as a great opportunity for the company to use the AI solution to bring a value for the company? How do we make sure that at the end of the day, it's actually realizing that? And how do we ensure the continuous learning between those aspects as well? So that's the models. So if you're looking into a bit of putting these towers in a, in a plan that we have looked and sorry for having a, a bit of a busy slide, but I think it's important to demonstrate that all of the streams are really successful if we redo them at the same time. So let me guide you through a bit. So if we're starting with, let's say, a value identification. So we're looking into business unit, understanding where is the value, how to find that value within the particular business unit, how do we reimagine the current way how the business is running, and what would be the future way of running that? Maybe we improve, maybe we optimize some of the aspects. And then what technologies we would need to execute that solution. So technology innovation aspect here will help to run to test that technology. At the same time, we see that number three, run digital workforce, which would help us to still continuously to deliver the same automation project, the same AI project, and continuously deliver the existing business challenges were identified previously. And then at the same time, number four, it talks about that we really need to ensure that as soon as we understand what is the way of new business delivery, what other technologies would help us, and how do we run it, Basically, what is the impact for us as a people? What is our new role there? And what skills do we need or we don't need to work with that together? So how do we color away after that is, is, is done, right? And then the last but not least, how do we identify continuously? So what would be the values uh, levers there, right? And then how do we track that? So we see that this was the really successful story of running all of them together. And this is just a snapshot of one of the years that, that we have executed together with different partnership, right? Some of the things that to highlight out of the story, so the some of the values, key values probably in this way is that the value is really important when we have the end-to-end -end view and there's a proper framework that is supported by the C-suite that we could realign on the organization level and we could have a clear understanding everyone are on the same page to run that. The rotation to the new with for the talents, really making sure that there is a clear combination of the human plus machine so that we have a good synergy of working the both parts together and delivering the values for, for the company. We have done a number of the automations and then I would say using that across different technological areas. So this was one of the big successes that we actually achieved results pretty fast. And then the last one is customer had a goal like a vision to become like a best in class within the particular sub-industry that I have been looking into. And this is one of the real aspects how thinking really where we want to be in a year or two helps us to put a key priorities for setting up a strategy. So that was the case number one. Uh, I would like to pass now to the case number two, which we called an, a digital factory. So within the digital factory, I want to recap a bit on some of the key components from the trends we talked today. And this topic would focus more on, on the people part and how do we support the people and the skills. Just to recap, as you remember, we're looking into there's many, almost all of the executives saying that it's very critical to have a skills for the talents to run the innovations within the companies and to look into the skill building activities is very important. And one of the ways to do that is actually to move towards the technology technologies like a local technologies, like a simple automation technologies, like AI technologies, where you don't really need to have too many of technical skills to leverage some of the components. And here's one of the example of the research showing how the low code market have been growing and predicted to be growed by the 2022 which is showed really that annual growth rate is almost 45%, which is enormously a lot to grow as a business part, right? And, and also some of the research is saying that actually not only the business value is there, but there's a speed, one of the really important aspects we get, right? So it talks around that up to 10% or not 10%, but 10 times 
faster we could deliver with such of a technologies. If you double click into that number to understand from other aspects, let's look into, for example, the garden research, we see there's some of the top three things, like there's a many reasons why the low code platforms is, is important here, right? And we're looking into productivity, reduce time to market and improve business process automation, right? So there's a different aspects that helping that up. So that's just a bit of deep diving into low code. But if you're looking into the challenges of this particular case and what, what's, what's the actual solution we have proposed. So this is a pharma, pharma customer, pharmacy, right? And uh, uh, there are a number of challenges as within the industry currently. And uh, some of them are relevant for this particular customer we have highlighted here as a four point. So first of all, it's quite often is that the person who's working, the worker itself, have a busy hand. And they need some kind of AI solution that will help to communicate with technologies without really typing or using the hands, but using more the voice technology as an example. There was a number of problems of looking into um, tracking the availability of the materials, basically wasting a time of, of an expert to go and validate the amount of the materials, looking into uh, the real-time real information available, so the data layer under it, so to help up to understand what is the available equipment, what we can book. And then also the automation itself was a pretty complex within the company um, as, as a such. So we were trying to address this as one of the key things. Um, some of the components we have looked as a ideas to, to, to help up specifically within this case. So we have uh, established a custom website which helps with the mobile app. We have built an, a reservation instrument that you are can communicate through the voice, which leveraging one of the AI services to do that. We have established the automation factor, which helps us to get the automation layer from the below. Um, there are several solutions that having the tracking, the inventory tracking and understanding how much um, supplies we do have available. And then we have used, and I think one of the core aspects here is the last one, is the user interface and user experience through the conversational AI. Some of the uh, some, some, some of the companies saying that it's a virtual agent, chatbots, or we are saying more into the conversational AI. In this case, we have leveraged an Amelia IPsoft product to leverage that. I have a couple of examples. How does that look in reality? So for example, there is a supply tracker. You can easily do that through the app. There is a, an ability to book some of the materials through the voice. So you're communicating in this case with the, a virtual agent as we call Rico. Um, and then there's an ability, for example, to book some of the specific rooms with your specification through that virtual agent. So it does that for you through voice. So you're actually communicating with technologies while you're doing the work and you're able to do that at the same time which is an, an, a really a big thing for this industry, for, for this case. So if we summarize into actual what have we looked into as a solution, it was an, a called a digital factory. The story is ongoing. I mean, we're still working with a partner on this to deliver the actual solution at the end. And we actually see this as like an ongoing story. Uh, but there's a many things are involved. There's a huge team so are working on that. Uh, there's a two big streams we call conversational AI and an automation, which we're working on having basically the business process automation powered by the AI and we're having this virtual agent that having resolution of a different pain points. And we're actually running the different continuous uh, workshops with, with the customer to address the pain points and pain points that are appearing on the ground and how the technological architecture that is powered by this AI engine and different other technologies could address those challenges and actually resolve them quickly. And some of the values so far gained, um, we have looked into the low code platform, which have now an ability to use every person on the ground in the train to could use the technology to build their own app, to build their own solution and to build their own automation through the code enabled citizenship automation. We then done some of the automation work ready, which delivers a good amount of savings. And this is just a start. There are multiple integrations between different tools, which is uh, usually a challenge, especially if we're talking around the trend of the technology architecture. And I would say the whole picture is, is in a really interesting direction as a code, as a digital factory to address really different aspects. And that's an, a growing strategy within the company that is scaling right now 
to the globe. And, and, and that's really just, and I would say, a first big step, but not the final step towards the story. And I'm sure there will be many, many, many things right now with the changing the market. Right. And then um, looking into the story number three today, which I will quickly, quickly go through, but show you a bit of also the financial sector. I know that some of the speakers have covered also the story on the, on, on the banking sector. So I'll not be going into very details about it, but we're talking about here around the big problem that probably most of you have heard what was happening in the banking sector for the past years, uh, with a topic of the anti-money laundering and a need of having and the next level technological solution that would empowered by AI and would help to do the proactively solution, let's say tracking and having all the threats highlighted and then making sure they are resolved. Just a bit of highlighting some of the key aspects from the trends perspective. So we still see, right, that the last years and many execute, I mean, 82%, have recognized that organizations and people have faced a huge, tremendous change within the last two years, which is also leading up to the banking sector as well. That's a basically increasing to the, as such as a topic. And then it's also looking into a, a new way of, of working. So to put all of that together, it somehow should be connected with actual way of working within the bank. So let's deep dive into a bit of a case story and have a couple of minutes of discussions around that. So a couple of two things like an uh, aspect why this is important for this particular customer. So first of all, they have looked into that the current solution and the actual banks is, is looking into having the need of getting the next generation anti-money laundering capabilities and a solution. Many of the banks are going through that right now. That is powered by the AI and artificial intelligence and which previously was more type of a rule-based, slow and reactive type of a mode of working. And instead they're trying to move into having type of a really proactive mode. So the story here, the way how we have done that and the case was 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 done some 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 while ago as well is that we have looked into cloud migration as a start right and then powering that by the having a good stable amount of data that we can leverage within the artificial intelligence as a solution to basically make a proper decisions and create the proper models that would help up with actually making a decisions after we have the infrastructure, we do extract that information, right? making sure that the data is available. And then the big magic, so to say, happening within the layer of the logic and model, where the data scientists within the bank, together with the partner, right, we're looking into having the solution of building the models, building their basically and the prediction models of a multi-agent system that would allow us to identify the hidden patterns of the particular fraud detections or particular challenges or particular trends we have seen based on the data that would identify and help the AML solution automatically, proactively highlight that there is a problem or here is the case that requires a double attention from the person. So it's helping up. And then by expanding that, by expanding more with the data, it would allow to make it more precise solution. Then the next level within that one, we call the prediction level, which would having those prediction results. And as we were talking about that, it's really have to be um, available for every person, right? Meaning that you don't really need to have a technical knowledge that deep to start working with a solution that would notify you around the, having the the, the petition, the potential threat, uh, we will need to have the interactive graph graphical user interface, right? So having the user interface, user experience that will help us to demonstrate that. So this is like a simple five step, I would say is a simplified version of the way how the uh, solution works. But the whole main idea is that AI in anti-money laundering is one of the big areas that we have seen in the past two years, especially accelerated by the cloud and by need of uh, putting that solution to the next level. Some of the key aspects here is what we have achieved within the particular story. First of all, having the automation solution also having a positive uh, impact on our customer satisfaction. AI now is a big thing within the company. 
right? So AI really a big topic within the company that could move forward. Um, solution helps basically to get an early warning for the person so person can focus on this challenging cases. And I mean, it's it's also an impact on the budget and, and, and current financial situation of, of the actual company. Right, so that was a bit of on three cases and the trends we talked today. And I wanted to finalize the today's discussion with a couple of key takeaways that each of us can take with us from the speech and from the discussion today with some of the key questions that we have. So if you're looking into the first trend, that will be how will your relationship with your customer be reshaped by the next generation technology? Is your technology architecture basically available and ready for the next big thing? And this is really good time now to rethink about it. So if you're looking into the digital twins, AI and a data world, how can it help you to transform your innovation process? What is your innovation process currently in the companies? So if you're looking into it from the people side, how are you training your workforce? Right, to think like a technologist, to look into that, to power that by the ideas in the technology. If you're looking into working from everywhere, and we, we are, then this is becoming a norm now. How, how is your business making remote work sustainable, seamless, and secured for every talent that works in your company? And then the last one, but not least one, which business relationship will be transformed by the growth of the multi-party systems like a blockchain distributed ledger, and so on, right? And then I wanted to finish up my speech with a good sentence from the, our technological visions, which saying that leaders don't wait for a new normal, they build it. So I want to finish out, let's build it. Let's build the new normal together, guys. Thank you very much for having me here. And uh, I will be happy to have be connected basically with you over the LinkedIn or through the My Events app. We do have also a place for a talk. So if you want to have a more deep discussion, please approach and I'll be happy to address all of your questions. Thank you so much, Maxims. Thank you so much for, for such an insightful and full of cases uh, presentation that was really interesting to listen to you. We're slightly behind on the schedule, so I will reserve myself only with one question for you. Uh, mm -hmm. COVID pandemic, pan pandemic uh, times in the world worked as a catalyst uh, for the digital uh, transformation and overall adoption of technical uh, solutions. What What's your personal take on this and how do you think the COVID pandemic actually influenced the development of AI adoption or maybe solutions? This is a really good question. I think one of the topics that is really one of the discussable topics nowadays, I think one of the main important aspects here we see that those companies that have been planning to move towards the AI, let's say, maybe now, maybe in five years, they had to accelerate that significantly. The technological part and the way how the, all the technologies works, which is actually leading up to the way how we use AI, had to be accelerated and rethinked within the company. This is basically around the talking that trend, is that probably two years ago, we would not put an, a technological architecture as a really a top one topic in the discussion. However, now, this is becoming a reality. And if you look into that from the technology side, then that's also how the AI helps us to transform every business right now. And this is also by knowing your customers better, how do we change our experience with the customer and how the AI helps us with that, then this would basically decide would our business survive, right? Would that grow? And we see a number of great examples how companies have really quickly adopted to the current situations globally and change the way how they offer their services, how they deliver their services and how they collaborate with their partners. So I think this is really and just an, a start in terms of really fast acceleration towards the artificial intelligence that would be powered by the cloud technologies. Amazing. Thank you for your answer. Once again, thank you for a really insightful presentation. Ladies and gentlemen, that was Maxim Snowmo's Data and Artificial Intelligence Lead at Accenture Baltics.